Alright, so a lot of you guys are probably wondering, what happened to the backhoe? Well, after I broke that cylinder deck, I splurged. I went out and was able to find a good deal on another 1010 engine. I won't tell you guys what I paid for this, but uh, put your comments down below. What do you think I paid for this uh, this engine? And it is a diesel. Uh, I believe it's the same block, I and mean, don't quote me on that, but it has the diesel head and the the pump so this is from a 1010 diesel i think this is like a 63 don't really know so i bought it as a package i got the engine with all the head components i got the main boom for the back because mine's rusted out however i don't know if it was bent before but uh, the shaft on it is bent and then i also got starter hydraulic pump all the goodies so he left me some boxes of Parts. I got the valve cover, exhaust, I got a muffler this time, which is sweet. But I've had this for probably a month now, and I haven't had time to look into it because I've been working on this truck. But uh, definitely check out that video series. This thing's a beast. I'll put a link up above for this uh, video series for that truck. It's pretty sweet. But now, I would really like a backhoe. Now, you might have seen my other videos on barring my buddy's excavators and the whole purpose of buying that backhoe was a quick and easy fix to have a backhoe this will be our first time investigating if this thing will turn over so i got my rusty trusty pipe wrench and we'll try not to break this mirror for this other project i'm working on i filled it with diesel and automatic transition fluid that was the most promising mixture uh matt from diesel creek what do you think of this I hope you watch my channel. One day we're going to work on a project together, buddy. We don't live too far apart. Let's see if this old girl will turn over. My rusted out pipe wrench will fit. It's not looking good. It looks like he's already broken this seal. He'll, yeah, I have that strapped down. It should. I say, I don't want to break my seal on it head like it did the other one. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna bolt this, this head down with my little makeshift jigs. Right, so I made these little jigs for the last engine. Huh. Looks like the thread length is different on these. Might not be a falcon. There we go, there's one there. A piece of copper on the bottom. I have this bucket of all these spacers that I kept. Let's see if they'll. Oh, yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is take. I'm gonna have to guess what order I got these bolts in. And oh, no, he wrote on it intake, injector. Injector's on this side. So remember that in case I need to remember. He wrote injector. So that would be number one. And we're gonna. Do some crazy stacking here like this. Yeah, I should blow these out too because I see some crud in there and I don't want to crack the block. I wonder if this flywheel is seized on there. It's possible that this is seized on, giving us issues. I am sitting on it. Oh, that, that's also a problem. Okay, so if I, so I think what I gotta do, I'm a big dummy. So I had the flywheel sitting on this block. I gotta lift up this engine and put the block under the oil pan, and then I might pull this off as well. And that might work because right now my ratchet strap is sucking it down onto this so this has to come off anyway um 
Trying to think of how. I might just get a little bottle jack. Nah, it's too heavy. Might be able to use the flywheel to our advantage as well. I just gotta get it off the flywheel. So, wish I had an overhead crane. That ain't gonna work. sitting on this pressure plate but it's going to have to do for now. Should have no resistance on it. Pull that clutch assembly off. Could have been water in there. It could be seized to the case, and that's not letting us uh, free spin. So, see if we can get that off. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. Two. Two out of six. Three out of six. Halfway there. Six out of six. Oh yeah, I'm psyched on that. This thing might be spring loaded. I... So I'm gonna slowly. Oh, yeah, it might not be actually. There's some spring pressure in that. This to explode. I don't actually know what's holding it on. Kind of don't want to look at it in case it freaking flies off there. Just in case, I'm gonna do one of these. Well, after all that, uh, my camera died right at the end, but I got this off safely, so that's good. Now, I gotta get this flywheel off of here. So I think what I'm gonna do is get a pick and kind of scrape in here. It looks like these are separate uh, housings. I'm gonna get a pick and scrape in there and fill it with some lube and then try to hit Try to tap on this and see if it'll come off. Uh, this might have to be something we put some heat, a torch out, and do a ring around it. I bet these are hard to take off normally, let alone rusted in. Well, shall we get the torch? Oh, there. There we go. Losing your noggin. Yeah. Hey! Yeah, baby, look at that. Look at all that rust. Well, I guess I'll try to get these out one at a time. I think they're junk. <laughs> Maybe this thing was buried in a lake. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's the locating dial. Alright, oh that's heavy. We are in. This might be worse than my other one. You can see a water line to there, which is fine. Should I get a torch? Torch method? I don't want to do anything too drastic because that's what screwed me last time. Two years of waiting. <sighs> we got another junk engine. I wish I had it on the stand. I might try to get my engine stand because then I can uh, pull the bottom pan off and look at the crank. Because if the crank is screwed, we're screwed from the beginning. But I think this one has the same freaking clearance issue as the other one and I think these two pistons are stuck now instead of that front one like the other John Deere it sucked because I had that other one actually spinning you know but I just couldn't get that piston out Uh, I've basically about given up trying to free this thing up with just like uh, pipe wrenches and <clears throat> straps holding it and all that stuff. I was hoping I could get it to free over, but even if I can get it mounted sturdier, I don't think it's going to go. I don't want to wreck this engine. What I'm going to do is clean this all up. It's just a mess everywhere. We're going to pull off the water pump, we're going to pull off the alternator, and maybe pull off that fuel pump. I'm not sure yet. Uh, that's probably the biggest high dollar thing here. I really don't want to retime it because I don't know how to do that on these engines. I don't have any documentation. I, ha I do have the manual. Tomorrow I'm picking up an engine stand and an engine hoist. Found a good deal. Tried PV blaster in the cylinders. It's not. It's not soaking in except for cylinder number one. It's soaking in the rings, but the other three, it's it's just not going in. So. I can't get this thing solid enough. I was gonna weld like some stands for it and whatever, but it's just bending the pallet in half. It's just not a good setup. So I'm gonna give myself more room by taking these off. And then tomorrow when I get the, the stand for it, we'll maybe be able to give it a little more foot spot on the stand. But if, again, if I, I said this last time, but if I don't do something, I'm not gonna get anywhere. This thing's just gonna sit here. So the engine hoist would be nice because then I can lift the old engine out of the other one without having to use like a bobcat or something and potentially break something. I'm kind of formulating the whole plan in my head. So, anyways, I'm gonna clean up and then you guys can watch me pull this stuff off and we'll go from there. It's 
from the engine stands and the engine lift picked up, picked those up for a pretty good deal. Um, so what we're going to do with those is get this engine off this pallet. It's been in my way for six months now. I can't work on it because I need to pull the bottom oil pan off. I don't want to pull the caps off to get the pistons out because it's still seized. I tried some remedies, not working. Going to have to uh, pull the whole deck out like the other one. But this time, we're not going to put it in the press. We're going to be gentle. So this thing, as you can see, super in my way. I think I'm going to leave the uh, fuel pump on, take off the water pump and the alternator to make it a little lighter. And then this filter over here, which is the diesel filter, this goes to a hard line on the way back. So just so I remember, we have hard lines for each head here. And then we have the hard line with the main fuel comes in right here to this fuel filter. Oh, I thought that was bolting on. Well, we're just gonna disconnect that flange there, get it out of the way, make this a little lighter, probably shave 20 pounds off it. Uh, with the alternator and this water pump off. I'm gonna try to leave this bracket in case I have to lift from here. But I think we're gonna put four head bolts in and lift from that. And then we'll secure to the back. I'll have to take those four out. Label those. And we'll put it on this Harbor Freight stand which hopefully is heavy duty enough to hold it. So. holes out they're just a little too tight for my head bolts.
Okay, I've decided I've got too much lean on these, so I'm going to pull these bolts out and put the head back on so it doesn't turn them sideways too far. Okay, so now we're going to pretend to clean this all up. Now, I was going to power wash it, but this is probably actually faster. Plus, I can get a good look for any cracks or anything like that. And we'll, uh, we'll hit it with the wire wheel. I can't get a break of these things. Disappointing. 
um, that the head is cracked up there, like the actual engine, the actual engine block is cracked, uh, the casting is cracked, and we found water in the engine and a lot of sludge. I'm not expecting that. I had figured this kid had drained it and put old engine oil in it. So he didn't even get that far. Maybe he cracked it. I don't know. So we need to see how bad the crank is. So we're going to pull off the oil pan to see how bad the crank is on this. Make a further assessment. Because I've done this a few times. I believe it's 9 sixteenths and 3 quarter. Since the crank looks visually all right, is to start pulling the caps off. I'll show you guys in a second there. Start pulling the caps off and pull this top end out. We can see how bad this is. All right, hopefully you guys can see some of that. There's my sludge. Yeah, there's all my, there's the dipstick there, and I caught some blue rag on there. I mean, it doesn't look rusty. So that's step one, but there was definitely oil in there, so that's good-ish. We're going to start pulling these caps off. I got this all labeled to accept the caps. I think they're 9 sixteenths. Oh, I forgot. These are on there super tight. Give it the old shock and awe. Well, I think what we're going to do is put some cardboard here, soften the fall. We're going to try to pry through the top at this point. Need to lift that back side a little more. Got everything laid out except for that one cap that's stuck on the uh, oil pickup. came right out. Hey, hey, hey. We did it. We did it, guys. Oh my god. Yeah, that's good. Well, this engine is worse than the other one from my memory. As far as rust. Cranks journals look better though. And there's our issue right there. I don't know if I can tap that. In theory, 
Nah, it has to seal. I'm not sure what to do about that, but let's look at this. This was the $2,000 part. So what I did last time was I put the caps back on and then I tapped outward, but I'm terrified to do it also. I think I wanna try to tap down a little bit and then run a knife in there, run a hone in all of them before I try to tap them out. See, last time I tried to tap them down, this time I want to tap them out because they should go out this way. I don't know if these are tapered, but I, I can't remember what I did last time. So, right, so let's get these gaskets off here. Also, this is oh, this piston is basically out. Also, don't have to remember front and back because there's a cut on this one side. And this is a reminder for Tim to check the footage before he assembles it to make sure the cut is on the right side. Keep it intact in case we have to make something crazy happen. Not that I would reuse that, but make a new one as a template. That kind of stuff. Okay. We can look at some of this wear. So there's some wear on that babbit. Wear on that babbit. This notch is the right hand side. It's upside down. So this is number this is the front. This is number one, we'll call it. Number one. This side here. Just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Huh. Try number two. Just this one. Same as last time. Always one. Okay, so we're going to take these three out. Mallet too, so that's good. I saw a guy do this, scrape this rust out so it doesn't stop the piston. See if it'll go backwards just a tad, and we can clean up.
we've had this had a chance to cool down now. So we'll see if the cooling effect has shrunk the piston at all. pretty good. Still hasn't moved so gonna sleep on that one. I'm not gonna go any further. That's how I messed it up last time so it's the next day I fill this with diesel fluid. Might put a little bit of transmission fluid in there too. But I was gonna soak the whole thing and fluid and then I realized it'd be better if I could put it in here, fill it to the brim, and measure, you know, have a have at least a measurement of hey, this thing is soaking it down or no, it's way too rusted. Plus I've never filled it from the back side yet. So let's do that real quick. Got some uh offer a diesel. I'll probably soak the pistons too just to make rim removal just a little bit easier. Oh, 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 Come on. Minor casualty. Alright, so we see some air bubbles. Looks like it is leaking through, so I'm going to get a pan from underneath that so we can catch all this and we'll just let it soak in.